Hello, and welcome to Engage with Eagle Forum. I am your host, Tabitha Walter, the political director of Eagle Forum. This season of Engage, we want to show you how you can get involved with Eagle Forum doing vital work that will impact generations to come. One of those ways we are showcasing the opportunities of action is sharing the experiences of our leaders who have been working with Eagle Forum for years. Many of our leaders even worked alongside our founder, Phyllis Schlafly. So today I have with me Eagle Forum board member, Utah State leader, and radio host, Gail Rizika. Welcome to the podcast. Happy to be here today and looking forward to this. <laughs> good, good. So I am so excited to hear your stories and your words of wisdom. Let's start off with the easy stuff. How long have you been with Eagle Forum and how did you become involved? Well, when I first actually found out about Eagle Forum was in 1974. And I actually was in a church meeting where they were talking about the Equal Rights Amendment and telling us that we needed to get involved. Uh, I hadn't even heard of it before then. I lived in Idaho and it, it wasn't something that, that I'd heard of. I, I was politically involved in many ways, but just not hearing about that. So uh, I left church that day, determined to get involved, to find out all that I could. And in the process of that's how I discovered Phyllis Schlafly. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, I've heard you say that when you got involved with Eagle Forum, you thought there were others who were more qualified than you. And that's really hard for us to imagine at this point in your life. But I, I think a lot of us feel the same way when we're getting into something new that we just, we don't feel like we're part of things quite yet, but Phyllis had told you that you should lead. And so what would you say to people who want to get involved, but they don't think that they're quite qualified to do so? You know, that, that was a really a, a difficult time for me because I, I had been involved in Eagle Forum for quite some time. I lived in Utah when Phyllis asked me to be the president of Utah Eagle Forum, but I had lived in Arizona before that and uh, had served on the Eagle Forum board there, but never thought about myself as being the president of Eagle Forum. And so when she asked me about that, immediately all these names flashed through my mind that were so more, you know, so much better than I would be, I thought, that, that they would. Uh, be the ones that that should be the press. And I told Phyllis that I gave her the names and said, you know, you, you're talking to the wrong person. How about this person and that person? Because they're so smart. And I just didn't see myself as being the one to do that. When I lived in Arizona, I always referred to myself as the president. There was a woman by the name of Shirley Whitlock. She was just kind of a legend, wonderful lady. And I was her easel. I would go with her when she testified. She was one who liked to use posters and, and things that she would you know, de demonstrate what she was talking about. And I was holding up the poster. So I was the person behind, you know, watching her and, you know, had been an easel instead, <laughs> instead of, of uh, leading Eagle Forum. So I just couldn't imagine. But Phyllis just wouldn't take no for an answer. She she told me, no, this was the way it was supposed to be. And I prayed about it. And, you know, God always gives us our answers. And that's really the answer mm -hmm. is to pray about it. But I had so much to learn. And so I had to surround myself with all these people that I should, thought should be in my place and, mm -hmm. and learn from them and learn from even legislators. I, I would talk to legislators and learn a lot from them on what's the best way to testify for something and, and, you know, talk to my husband all the time. I could never have done any of it without my supportive husband, because he's a lot smarter than I am. So, you know, I just went to the people that, that I knew were smart people and, and got my answers. But of course, mostly I talked to Phyllis. Phyllis just taught us so much and she, you know, she didn't leave me alone. I could call her anytime, you know, she would answer her own phone and, and stay on the phone and talk to you. It was, it was just amazing what she would do or when she was at the office, somebody else would answer the phone, but she would always take the call unless she just was, you know, already on, on another call or something. So I got lots of answers from Phyllis and just learned along the way. I used to say that God found somebody with an empty head so he could just fill it up. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any preconceived ideas. He just filled it up and, and I learned it as, along the way. And that's what I would tell anybody to do. Uh, 
you know, you, you have to get experience somewhere. We all think, well, I can't do that because I haven't had enough experience. How do you get the experience if you don't do the job? And if you just turn to God, that was the most important thing is that all along the way, turning to God. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this, but you did something similar to me when I was first hired for Eagle Forum. You, it was just, I think a few weeks uh, after I was hired and you asked me to be on your radio show. Oh yeah. I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, does she even know who I am? Like I haven't even had media experience. I had a little tiny bit here and there, but your radio show is an hour long. And I was, I had never spoken for an hour on political matters. And so I was so, I was terrified that I was going to say something wrong or I wouldn't know the answer, but you made it super easy and you were very encouraging. And so it really built my confidence in doing media and speaking and because I had that behind me, I had that under my belt. And so you helped me just jump right in and it was a great experience. Well, I'm glad to hear that because that's what people did for me. Yeah. 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 So let's talk a little more about Phyllis because I love hearing stories about Phyllis. Unfortunately, I was unable to meet her, but you got to work hand in hand right alongside of her. Like you talked about a little bit earlier. So what was, tell us more about what she was like and what it was like working on those issues together. You know, the great thing about Phyllis is that she, as I said, she didn't ask me to do this and just leave me out there to figure it out for myself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Phyllis was a great one to let us do our, do our thing. You know, she let the, she always allowed the States uh, to, once she, once she knew that we were following, you know, the, the, the principles of Eagle Forum and the principles that she, she shared with us, then she she trusted us to build our organization and build strong organizations. That's how Phyllis uh, made all this work. That's why Eagle Forms always been so successful because she Phyllis you know knew that in order to hold up Eagle Form it needed strong legs. So she she sent it out to the states and got strong leaders in the states and let us develop our 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 own way and our own personality and what we needed to get done. She was a great leader that way. Other organizations I've watched over the years come and go because they they kind of rule from the top down. And, mm-hmm. and the, the people in the States have to keep checking with national before they can even make a decision. And, and sometimes it takes a few days and the, the moment is over. You know, in this, this business, you have to make decisions in a hurry sometimes. Steady, read quick and give some answers. Phyllis taught us to do that and built very, very strong uh, state organizations for that reason. So with the idea that she wouldn't always be here. And when she was gone, she knew the states would have to hold Eagle Forum up mm-hmm. while they, you know, we, while we learned to live without her. And she taught us how to live without her. You know, just like a good parent does. You teach your children how to survive without you in, in the world. And so she knew, she did that. And she taught us great things. She taught us how we should dress, what our earrings should look like, you know, what even makeup and other things. Not that she gave us classes on makeup, but she would tell us if ours needed to be improved. But, you know, <laughs> so she, you know, she just told us what to how to present ourselves when we were talking to to any dignitaries or, or legislators or congressmen or sometimes even the president of the United States and how we should should conduct ourselves. And so people just here in the state of Utah, they always tell me that we know who the Eagle Forum ladies are. You're the ones that are always dressed nice. You're the ones that, uh, you know, treat everybody with respect. She did, she absolutely taught us how to be respectful. But some of the things that she taught me, one of my very favorite things that I quote her all the time, even, even in meetings when there's people on both sides of the aisle there and not, and I'm testifying on something. If it, if, if it works, I use it because people will I'll be testifying on something and somebody will make a comment about it. Gee, I can't believe y'all you're in here testing on my testifying on my bill, you know, because it might be a Democrat or it might be a, a liberal, more a liberal Republican. And I just quote Phyllis and say what she always said, you can vote for the candidate of my choice for any reason you choose. And that was my absolute favorite that she taught us. And, and, and I've conducted it that way ever since. I always remember that. And I always use that. 
and know that there are people that we need to be kind to all the people to be gracious and 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 not let our anger get in the way and not not to say unkind words because we don't know that the next time maybe we will need to work with those people and a good example of course is the article 5 convention the what we called con con for years and years and uh, in utah we are mostly all Republicans and we just have a few Democrats in the legislature. And so we always needed those Democrats. The Democrats, all the Democrats were opposed to uh, an Article 5 convention, but most of the Republicans weren't. And so I worked very closely with them and have made some good friends over the years. So Phyllis taught us that. And then the other thing that Phyllis taught us, and, and it was something, you know, something she always says, something that Ronald Reagan said, I've heard it even Thomas Jefferson said, and that there's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't, don't worry about who gets the credit. That is so important. And as I work with a coalition in the coalitions with other people, as I just ask people to come and get involved with us, uh, we can't, we can't uh, just think that, you know, well, I've got to say me, 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 I, 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 or, or even eagle form this and eagle form that. We have to talk about all the people that we're involved with and, mm-hmm. and learn to, uh, when we go into our, our coalition meetings to work together, sometimes we just need to leave our logos at the front door in a basket or something. Mm-hmm. And if we do those things, we can be accomplished so much because Phyllis Schlafly accomplished miracles. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. You know, you you obviously have studied her and read, read about her accomplishments. And mm-hmm. I watched her in so many of those accomplishments. And I, I believed in her and I had faith in what she was doing and what she taught me to do, because I saw the end results. Mm-hmm. And she was an amazing woman. In fact, just second only to my own mother, as she been the biggest example in my life. No, that's so sweet. I yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing what she did, and it's a travesty that she's not in history books for what she did. Because people, no no matter you know someone's political belief, could really draw a lot of life lessons from her and how to, like you said, how to conduct yourself, how to have relationships with people um, in your organization or even outside your organization, she, she did a lot and she did it with such dignity and class. So she really stood out in, in a lot of good ways and, and people wanted to continue working with her. She was also a great example as a mother. Mm -hmm. She was a very, she was a very faithful woman, very faithful, very righteous God was everything in her life. She she turned to God and you know if, and and always you know had prayers and things and just just she was just a righteous woman yeah. and a very good mother. I learned a lot from her about her children. I uh, you know we became Phyllis and I became good friends, and right up until the end, and when, when she was able to talk on the phone, we were still talking on the phone, mm. and. Uh, I learned so much from her. And sometimes we, you know, lots of times we, we had very personal conversations about our families and problems and things that we, uh, that we all go through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I learned what, what a loving, loving mother she was and, and, and a loving wife. She had the best marriage. We could all, all learned from Phyllis about, she, she used to talk about that she loved men. You know, she, you know, wanted men in our lives that she loved her, her, her husband. And he was in, and turned to him to get answers all the time. She taught me that too. Well, let's talk about your family and, and some of the things that you learned while doing this work and having a family at the same time, you know, Phyllis was a huge proponent of putting family first. And that has trickled down even while I've been here at Eagle Forum at, everyone talks about how I I should put my family first and the job comes after that. And that has benefited my family significantly, especially in the DC area where everything is just work, work, work. So um, one of the most impressive things about you, in my opinion, is that um, you were able to cultivate a family during all of this work And then I saw you a few months ago in DC and you told me that you had over 40 grandchildren. 
So yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me how you did it all during those years. Well, you know, I took my children with me. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't, my, my children had quite an education and we homeschooled. So when I, you know, I mean, every, everything is a season. And when I had a lot of little babies and things, of course, I, my season was to do things at home. And back then we didn't have internet or anything like that. We had a telephone, <laughs> everything mm-hmm. was on the telephone, or you had to sit down and write a letter and put it in the mail. Cause that, that was the only way I said, that's when I was first learning about the ERA and learning about Phyllis. That was a very interesting time. Cause there wasn't internet then you mm-hmm. had to, to, to search other ways and get the information and, and make phone calls and try to ask questions. And, and that's, it took me a while to even find Eagle form and find out how to be involved. And um, so that at that time in my life, I my children, like I say, were at the age that I stayed home all the time because I had so many babies because I had 12 children. But when with my my I always call the the second set of littles, you know, they they would just it just worked out that I could take them with me because when Phyllis asked me to be the Eagle Farm president in Utah, that was the conditions. Well, I gotta take my children. I, what am I gonna do? She says, take them with you. Yeah, you take your children. So I did. I took them to the Capitol with me. We homeschooled so we could do that. They were always with me at the Capitol. I, when I went to Eagle Council and things like that, my husband and children all came with me. My children had great memories of growing up, going to Eagle Council and other events and going to the Capitol. They just, you know, my boys discovered all the underground things that went on in the temple and probably, I mean, in the, in the Capitol and probably other things that they shouldn't have. But we, you know, they, my children learn how to lobby. They learned how to have opinions about things. They wrote letters and tucked in uh, pocket constitutions with dog-eared things and highlighted yells that they sent to congressmen. And, and so that's how you, I can make it work because family has to come first. And so the, I couldn't leave them. I couldn't go off and leave them. There were days when they just say, oh, mom, can I stay home? And those were the days they stayed home with their father because he, his job was that he, his office was in our home and he worked out of our home. They didn't want to do that too often because when he when he helped him with homeschool, it got very involved. <laughs> say, I just wanted to ask him one question. It took an hour. <laughs> so, but uh, we you know we did the things together. We reared our children together. We homeschooled our children together, and uh, and then they just went with me. That, that's beautiful. It so tell me what the conversations look like in your home when you talked about politics. Oh, they, they, they were very interesting. You know, they were a lot, a lot of children, a lot of opinions. My parents, my, and my mother lived with us. My parents were Democrats. And uh, that was always interesting. A lot, a lot of laughter. I bet. <laughs> Sometimes I usually told the children, now we're not going to talk about politics and grandpa and grandma here, but somehow <laughs> grandpa or grandma would bring it up, whatever. But uh you know, it's all about love. It's all right. about kindness. It's all, so we had interesting conversations, but always with, with love and kindness. And I, I believe that's the way it should be right now. I think there's so much contention going on in the world. There's a lot of things happening and it's scary time. Mm-hmm. And, and we do need to be involved. Everybody must be involved and speak out. But we can do it in a way that we don't have, we can't let it stress us. We can't let it make us unhappy. We can't forget about gratitude. I think gratitude and love are the two things. As long as we have gratitude and we remember every single day of our life that what we're grateful for and that will help us get through the stressful times. And then, you know, we just love all people. Everybody's a child of God. Mm-hmm. And we've got to remember that. Sometimes that's really hard. You know, mm-hmm. I, I had a legislator I used to have a lot of problems with. And one time I went to an event where he gave the opening prayer. And I turned to my husband afterwards and I said, oh, I really needed to hear him pray. You know, it just it just yeah. helps. You think, yeah, I remember now who he is. He's a child of God. And it helped. It helps in relationships if you remember those things mm-hmm. and, and talk about the issues. I always made a point of when I was debating somebody going on to a debate or something, whether it was a television debate or whatever it was, that just before while we were waiting to, to, to go on asking them personal questions about their life, about their children, uh, their jobs, whatever it was, just so I knew some things. And then I tried to remember them so that the next time I saw them, I could say, well, you know, how's this child or that child, or how's that program working at school that you were working on? 
And and that way we could we could go on the, onto the camera discussing the issues without demeaning each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so important. And you know, I think people are getting really tired of hearing the extreme rhetoric on on both sides, frankly. And you know, I'm in I'm in the DC world, so I hear threatening things and I hear awful words. And really the change in the true relationship happens when you're face to face with someone, when it's your family member, when it's your friend, when it's your child. And so we can't forget that, um, that important component of just being with people and having those important conversations. And it doesn't have to be contentious. It can be out of a place of love. Well, you know, in this situation we have right now with with uh like say now the internet that i never dealt with for years and years and there's all these threads going on Mm -hmm. and all these people talking on these threads and there's so much anger yeah and i i some some of the threads i just shut down and even though there's information on there i can use i i don't want to be part of the anger and and i and i so try to reach out to them and and point out you know don't take it to anger because that's that you know we, we have a lot to do we have a lot of work to do and we can't do it if we're angry and we can't do it if we're not grateful and we can't do it if we don't uh, express love and concern about all people. And then we can get something done. Right. So speaking of getting something done, let's talk about how to get people involved in Eagle Forum, whether it's on the state level or on, on the national level. You know, you have experience doing both because you rub shoulders with with both state leaders and national leaders. So I, I know I can always count on you to, if I send you an email, I'm like, can you reach out to this person and try to sway their vote? And so you're, you know, them, you have them on speed dial. I think some of them have you on speed dial actually. (laughs) Um, So you're well known, but um, how, how would you recommend that someone get involved if they, let's say they're, they're feeling that anger and they need to channel it somewhere. Or they're feeling like they really need to make a difference for future generations. Where do they even begin? Well, I think it is really important to, to, to reach out. And of course, we'd love to have them reach out to Eagle Forum uh, here in Utah, Utah Eagle Forum. And of course, on a national level, we need to have everybody reach out. And, and those, those relationships uh, that you build are very important. You know, you, when you were talking about, when I was, we, you know, I was, I was at the Supreme Court on, on uh, Wednesday, and uh, I wanted our, our congressman to come over. So I think my best, best one was I was sending texts to him saying, come across the street and let's take pictures together, which we did. You know, we, Mike Lee came over and we took pictures and John Curtis came over and took pictures. But when I sent, sent uh, the, the uh, request to Blake Moore, he sent me a picture of a brand new little baby. His uh-huh. baby had been born four weeks early during the night. And he was on a plane headed home. And I told him, I said, this is the best pro-life um, picture ever, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's those personal relationships that you can build that, that, that allows you to have able to uh, communicate. And when I sent it to Chris Stewart, you know, both of them being representatives, Chris texted me back and said, I'm at home with COVID. Oh, no. <laughs> And he just texted me today to tell me he was headed back to Washington. So uh, yeah, those relationships have really, really helped. And so we do need to build the relationships and we, we, we can't build them by ourselves. I wouldn't have these relationships with all these congressmen if it wasn't for Eagle Forum. Mm-hmm. It, it takes groups coming together. And as you, they, you start to reach out to these people, they know that you're part of a, of a group, but Blake Morris had us, but to get, had, had me put together for him with all the groups in Utah, some a big pro-life meeting. Well, he wouldn't have called Gail Rizika. He called Eagle Forum. You know, he that that's who they were reaching out to. And and so that's so I would say to everybody, join with us. You you want to you know join with National Eagle Forum, of course, go, always go to the websites. You can you, know, you can uh, find out all the information on the website, the phone numbers or, the, or whatever you need to do to make calls. Uh, on our Utah Eagle Forum website, you can go there. You can get uh, an email to reach us that way, or a phone number to call to reach us that way. You can just sign up to, on, online to get our our alerts, and those alerts are very important. And that draws mm-hmm. you in, and you think, "Hey, I want to do something." 
we are at the legislature every year, all 24 seven, almost it feels that way, but we, right. you know, every single solid day, every day of the single solitary day of the, of the legislative session, we are there and we have our interns there and workers there and we need help. If you want to learn about being involved, come up to the legislature. We will be there to greet you and meet you and take you to, to the, to the hearings, the meetings and, and, take you with us to go uh, meet legislators and so just get involved just reach out to eagle forum and we will do the rest and bring your kids yes and bring your children yeah <laughs> right. gail it's been such a pleasure talking to you and i i can't even convey in the short amount of time how instrumental you've been in my career and, and in my life and also eagle forum as a whole it, there's there's so much to learn and it seems very overwhelming at the beginning, but people like you make it so much easier and, and you make me feel more confident and it's, it, it's made a, an enjoyable career for me. So I appreciate all the work that you're doing. And I know Utah appreciates all the work that you're doing as well. Well, thank you. And thank you for being part of Eagle Farm because you are a beautiful young mother who's who's learning how to, to have two little babies and still do all that you do, and that's what it's all about. Is how how do we how do we balance and always always put our family first? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much. Thank and you. if if you are listening to our podcast, uh, I encourage you to follow Gail's efforts over at UtahEagleForum.org. She said that you can sign up for their alerts. You can also sign up for national alerts at eagleforum.org as well. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast, engage with Eagle Forum, and then share us with your friends and leave us a review. You can find us on all of the major social media outlets and at eagleforum.org. From your house to the state house to the White House, this is Engage with Eagle Forum. Eagle Forum.